Zila, 9.5 out of 10. Jingyuan, 8 out of 10. Silver Wolf, 10 out of 10. And Luo Cha, 8.5 out of 10. Those are my pull scores for the characters that have been released so far in terms of how much you should pull for them from a meta point of view. And so today, when we get to Blade, Kafka, Fushen, and IL, I'm going to do the same for them as well. Hi, I'm Lace. 1.2 is about to drop, and what that means is that Blade and Kafka are pretty freaking close. However, especially for free-to-play and low-spender players, out of the four, we can realistically only probably guarantee one of them. And so today, I wanted to run through a why you should or shouldn't pull for Kafka, Blade, and if you should maybe hold on for Fushen and the Imbibita Lune, based on what we know today, because we don't actually know too much about these two characters. Personally, I've had some um, exposure, I guess is the best way to put it, to Blade and Kafka, and we also do have their kit reveals from the 1.2 livestream. But as always, my guys, no leaks. I'm not going to cover their kits in this video, but if you did want to watch my analysis on Blade and Kafka, you can check out the video uh, th this way. All right, before we get started, let's cover off a few points. If you like somebody, you save for them and roll for them. Don't worry about the meta. I've personally actually stopped caring. Your boy is building sample right now. Second of all, if you invest enough, anyone is viable. And lastly, I'm going to assume that you are a low spender or a free to play player, or AKA, you are limited in resources. With that said, let's start with Blade. The best way to describe this guy is that he is quite tanky, sometimes heals himself, does good damage, AOE, breaks quite well, and is very skill point efficient. I would actually classify him more as a sub DPS because of his skill point economy. The way that he plays is kind of more like a Clara as opposed to like a hook. And so what that means is that you could take your blade with a Danheng and have Danheng act as the main DPS and blade as the breaker slash supporting DPS. Or you could throw him with an SP hungry support such as Bronya. However, I guess the big downside is that considering blade in a vacuum, He's kind of like just another DPS. Your boy doesn't actually offer like any utility at all. All he does really is damage and breaking. Now, that's not bad. Because my guys, remember that this whole game is revolved around damage and breaking, especially in Memory of Chaos. And so I think the other way that I would describe him is that he is very solid and does his job very well, but he's <laughs> kind of boring. Because you're essentially going to be seeing this thing over and over and over again. Now, remember though, that boring is not bad, especially if he is effective, and he is effective. He's very good at what he does. And on the other hand, for win DPSs, we actually also have Danheng, but most people probably haven't built him. Where Danheng can go, Blade can also go, but also vice versa. If you see any win weaknesses like boom right there, boom right there, or these guys over here, then you can throw either or both of them in. And so the bottom line is that in this meta right now, your boy Blade is a very solid pull, and I would rate him something like a 7.5 out of 10 would pull. So uh, if this was kind of a pull tier list, please don't take this one literally. This is kind of like a pull priority kind of thing. I would say that he would probably sit around here, maybe maybe even eight, but 7.5 for now. And so in that case, let's talk about Kafka. And it's interesting because where I left off with Blade was that he's boring, but very effective. On the other hand, Kafka, and the whole dot play style, to be honest, is just so much fun. The gameplay is pretty similar to Hypercomp, but instead you're stacking dots and then eventually you're blowing them up with your girl. However, her main weakness is that using her is a lot more restrictive because there is going to be a quote unquote best team for Kafka. I'll definitely cover it in my Kafka guide, so subscribe if you haven't already. But the thing is, the best team for Kafka may not necessarily line up with what are the weaknesses of the enemies in MOC? But then if you do use the characters that counters the weaknesses, then it's likely that the team DPS will drop. Now, not always the case. There are certainly some options, but the versatility today is not quite there yet, as opposed to like the hyper carry comp. What I will say though, is that as a standalone character, she is actually a lot more solid than I thought she would be. But when we do get more characters that will give her more elemental coverage, and it doesn't have to necessarily be the dot characters like your Sampo, it could actually be like your Pella, who does defense down or some other like supports that give attack and speed and not the crit damage stuff, then I do think that it will mitigate that weakness and it will be Kafka's time. And so in terms of pulling from a meta point of view, I would say that she's probably like a 6.5, 6 out of 10. Today, 
Again, from a meta point of view, I would probably roll for Jing Yuan over her. In fact, if you already have Jing Yuan, I probably wouldn't even roll for Kafka because you do need more elemental coverage. But my guys, my personal pool score for Kafka is more like an 8.5 out of 10 because she's just so much fun in this meta of everybody is a hyper carry kind of thing. I do think that she is a character that is going to have way more value and impact on her rerun when there are more like dots and dot support characters versus Blade, who is solid today. Okay, let's talk about Fushan. So right now, there are two things that we know about Fushan. The fact that she is a quantum type and she is also a preservation class unit. And so because she is quantum and preservation, this makes her a potential contender for slots three or four of the mono quantum team. And for those of you who are not familiar with the mono quantum concept, this team, and let's put in links for example, this mono quantum team is super, super giga hyped because it can effectively change challenge any team that has quantum weakness, so like any of these guys over here. And if it doesn't have quantum weakness, like any of these teams over here, then it can just implant quantum weakness 100% of the time with Silver Wolf. So it's quite literally a silver bullet that will work against anything. And so with Fushen and Lynx over here, this is probably going to be the first iteration of the mono quantum team. Now, I know you guys are going to be like, oh, what about QQ? This one over here. The issue is that Qingchue is actually a replacement for Zilla because both Zilla and Qingchue both suck up skill points like a vampire. But to be honest, personally, I think that the end goal of the mono quantum team should look like Zilla, Silver Wolf, one solo sustain, hoping that it's Lynx, and then one last offensive support, hoping that it's like a quantum harmony or something. It would be really good to not have to run another defensive support like your Fushan over here. And so now you have two defensive supports. Outside of this mono quantum team, there are kind of like two more possibilities for your Fushan. She is either as good as your Japad or your Locha, where they can solo sustain entire teams by themselves, or she can't. I'm personally gonna make the bet that she is not going to be as good as Japad, and I compare her with Japad because he is another preservation unit, Locha is abundance. And the reason that I think that Fushan is not going to be able to solo sustain a whole team is because, well, Japad already exists. However, I'm not gonna comment any further because that is just all speculation. And so then the question becomes, is Fushan enabling this mono team enough of a reason to pull her? Mm, it kind of depends. Remember that MOC has two sides. If you use your mono quantum team, then you could use it on this side or this side. However, mono quantum requires three five-star units, which is very, very expensive. And so what you're essentially saying is that you're gonna dump all of your resources into one team and leave the second one left for dead. So if your mono quantum team comes over here, then you better be able to deal with the other ones over here. You better have some physical, some fire, some physical, or some ice. Personally, I don't think that's a good idea at this stage in the game because it's quite unlikely that you actually have elemental coverage for all of this or all of this or all of these ones, unless you're a whale. And so yeah, if you can actually find the coverage for the other side, then I would actually say go for it. But the reality is, is that once you're using this one, you're also using up your Silver Wolf. And so therefore you're gonna be limiting a lot of your options now. And so from an MOC meta point of view, if you can cover the other side of the elements, then I would say that she's probably like a 7.5 out of 10, but only because she's hopefully a skill point efficient quantum unit, not because she's her. For her herself, Knowing that she is a quantum preservation unit, I would still probably deprioritize her, probably more like a four out of 10, but that's based on pretty much zero information today. It's very likely that you're gonna see a video from me in about a month or two's time. I was wrong about Fushan. Here is why you should roll for her 100%. Ha. Lastly, we have Imaginary Danhung, AKA Imbibita Lune. I'm just gonna call him IL. Uh, that's a little bit too much for the tongue, if you know what I mean. Imaginary Man and Destruction Class. However, if I was to compare everybody that we talked about today, Blade, Kafka, Fushan, and IL, I think that IL is going to have the most value and probably the one that I think out of these four is the most worth rolling for. And I'm saying this without knowing anything about his kit. But why I'm able to say that is because if we look at the MOC meta, you'll notice that typically one side is very quantum weak and the other side is very imaginary weak. And so with your boy as a destruction unit and based on other destruction characters such as Blade, uh, your Claras, your Hooks, they generally do good damage, they have good breaking and all in all are very, very solid units. And so therefore, I think he's going to provide extremely good coverage over half of MOC. So for example, I see quantum, 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 quantum. That just screams silly to me. And then everywhere I see imaginary, that's all IL. Now, 
Yes, we do have Welt right now, who can certainly act as a DPS and can break pretty well, but I think that IL is going to be able to do that job a little bit better because he is actually of the class. And so what that means is that your Welt can be on the same team, but can focus on the debuffing. And hopefully the team DPS is going to be able to go up. You could even freaking run the mono imaginary team, something like this, right? But my guys, there is one other thing. And it's that I think that this guy in Genshin terms is Archon level. Now, this is pure speculation, but I think that IL or Danheng, March, Sampo, these guys that aren't able to be rated by the rating pistol, I think that they are going to be the universe's equivalents to the Archons, kind of like a special unit. And if that is true, then it's way more likely that IL is going to be really good. But again, until we learn more, I will leave it here. And so in terms of rating your boy, knowing that he's imaginary and destruction and only that information, and with our current roster, the ones that we have here today and the MOC meta, I do think that he is going to be at about an 8.5 out of 10. Obviously, again, that's just with the information today, which is little to nothing. We'll see when his kit drops. But as somebody who doesn't actually have welts and who is trying to finish this MOC, you can see why he is so appealing. And so my guys, that is going to bring our final rating to kind of look like this for all of the characters up until IL. However, for the last time in this video, this is from a meta perspective. If it was my personal pull list priority, it would actually look something like this. But that said, that's the end. Goodbye.